Welcome to the Senior Focus. I'm your host, Nick Kaltzis. I'm here today with Hank Soltz. You've heard Hank before on uh, the weekday morning show uh, for WCRN. Airs from 5 to 9 in the morning and also in the afternoons, the uh, midday report. I'm also here with Wayne Bailey, a registered financial consultant. We're going to talk about the debate that occurred last night. Uh, basically a review of not only the presidential debate, but also a review of, we'll say, the president's record over the last four years. Um, the debate occurred at Hofstra University. And where's Hofstra? Upstate New York? Yes. yes. Right. Um, you know, one of the things that they were saying is that the debate started a little bit late. I don't know that I detected that it started late, but apparently it started a couple minutes late. Did you notice, notice anything? No, right at 9 o'clock uh, I turned it on within yeah. a few minutes, maybe a five-minute delay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, all I was thinking is, you know, perhaps uh, they tried to use a little bit of a delay one side or the other, kind of like a boxing match, right? Oh. A little bit of a delay makes someone wait. <laughs> one, one person didn't want to come out before the other one? Uh, I, I don't know. I See, I was watching you as realize well, they and didn't I really want, didn't see that. They didn't want one to come out before the other. You're supposed to come out simultaneously. Yeah, the idea was come out together and then go right to a particular you know, wherever right. their uh, seats Shake were, their and podiums. Then go and have their, right. their stool. Um, and maybe they did come out at the same time, but uh, the camera was only focused on one of the candidates. So, hmm. you know, we're not really quite certain, you know, how hmm. they came out, but the camera only focused <laughs> on the president. Right. It seemed to me that they came out at, at the same time, and I, I, think so I didn't too. notice that they that it was really late getting started. Not a, yeah. not late. It ran a few minutes overtime as well. well. Yeah, I'm not quite certain that, uh, like you say, you know, the start a little late goes a little mm. bit over. I'm not sure that that provides any uh, uh, advantage to one uh, one candidate or the other. What I did like to see, though, even if they came out at the same time, was at least. Mitt Romney showed a little respect and let the president sit down first. Mm -hmm. Then he sat down. Mm -hmm. Where I don't know if Obama would do that as he's bowing down to everybody else out there. Right. So, um, you know, one of the questions I have is, you know, media bias in the debates. And so I'm always kind of on the lookout to see if I detect any bias one way or the other. Um, and, you know, I suppose, regretfully, I think I do see a bit of bias directed in favor of the president and against Mitt Romney. From Candy Crowley, from I, the moderator? I think so. I mm -hmm. think so. From the way she asked the questions, or? I think from the way she asked the questions, the way she interrupted, you know, the parties when they spoke, the fact that uh, they didn't allow equal time, she didn't allow equal time. Yeah, I suppose, you know, perhaps, you know, almost impossible to have a 50-50 split, um, you know, to have someone speak two minutes, shut them off right at two minutes, and then let the other person respond for two minutes, shut them off right, right at two minutes. But if you take a look at the debate, you'll see that every single question, the president had another 30 or 40 seconds. Now you add that 30 or 40 seconds up over 90 minutes, mm. and it ended up that the president had another, like, five, six minutes of air time. Right. I thought that both really uh, went over time. I didn't think that there was a, a time when either of them ended right at their, at, at their two minutes because you could see the clock in oh, the background yeah, as, as, as they were speaking. Where I was wondering if there was any kind of a, a bias, Nick, mm -hmm. was she was sort of the gatekeeper for the questions. A lot of the questions did seem, if there's a conspiracy theory out there, a lot of the questions did seem to be in the president's wheelhouse. She mm -hmm. was the one who knew what person was going to ask what question. She was right. really the only person right. who had that, that information. And also, uh, when she did say several times, you know, uh, listen, Mitt Romney, governor, uh, we're going to get to that or you'll have mm -hmm. time to add that onto your other answer. And she went on to another question. I wasn't sure that she did that as much for the president, and the big one, the one where you would say, if we, if this was, we were dissecting a Patriots game the next day, where unfortunately we're talking about the ref having thrown the flag, and was it a blown call? I think was where she decided that she was going to do an instant fact check, the one and only time, right. and tell Mitt Romney that that he was wrong when uh, the president had had indeed said act of terror. But what Mitt Romney was talking about, and I think was clear to everyone 
was not just that one piece of language. He mm -hmm. was talking about active terrorism. And in that case, clearly, it was the two weeks until the White House, the administration, acknowledged that it was an act of terrorism, that it wasn't a spontaneous demonstration, and that it wasn't tied to a ridiculous YouTube movie. Yeah, I think when he made that comment, uh, as you know, indicating that the president took about what did he say, 14 days or two weeks or something like that to you know admit or indicate that it was a terrorist attack, and like you say. Uh, Candy Crowley came and said, well, I'm sorry, you know, Governor Romney. I don't know whether she called him that Mr. Him. Romney at that. that time or Governor Romney because she did refer to him a number of times as Mr. Romney, mm. which I thought was a, a little bit surprising as well. Um, I agree. I think that he may have made a general statement. And I think he did make a general statement twice, basically to the effect that the United States isn't going to bow down to terroristic acts. But he didn't directly link what happened in Libya to a terrorist act. That's right. And I think but Mitt Romney was on the attack at that moment and it broke his momentum. It did. And I really think that he missed a home run if he kept going after him at that point because it was clearly noted even after the debate, there was eight readings of that uh, report that he did not say it was an act of terrorism. He said, we just won't tolerate active terrorism, right. not knowing what happened, then pushing the buck on to someone else. You know, I think they're going to get right back on this issue on Monday. I hope when so. When the mm -hmm. debate mm -hmm. focuses on foreign affairs. Um, I mean, I'm, of course, not privy to what questions they're going to ask, but I would assume one way or the other, you know, Governor Romney is going to try to bring it to that particular issue. Right. and. I would assume he's going to be well prepared to go back and readdress that issue. Yeah, no, I think what happened in Benghazi is still something that has not been adequately answered. And Candy Crowley herself, I think to her credit after, said that she wasn't trying to favor one side right. or the other, what she, which <coughs> did, that she was going to go on and try and make, and if you hear her whole statement, and some of it kind of got lost because they were talking over one another, that she did try to say that Mitt Romney was, was correct overall. Yeah, I think that she did attempt to try to be bipartisan, if you will. She tried to you know, be fair, cut it right down the line. The president did indicate in his speech the next day in the Rose Garden you know, about you know, how the U.S. isn't going to abide or you know, put up with acts of terrorism. Again, separating, I think, the issue of whether the attack in Benghazi was a terroristic activity or not. And uh, when she interrupted the governor and indicated that, you know, actually with the transcript does indicate that he did say it was a terrorist act, <clears throat> the crowd began to, uh, I don't know if it was a you know, they began to applaud or they began to laugh, but she not at one time did she ever remind them that they were supposed to hold mm. their mm. applause or the laughter until the end of the event. Um, it seemed like it was more in favor of the president, I thought. Yeah, and I think it, it, particularly in, in that moment, it, it is a shame that uh, 70 million people what the impression is at that moment, because they aren't going to read the fact check in the Washington Post, or they aren't going to read the fact check in the Boston Globe mm -hmm. uh, that came out. At that moment, it seemed as if Candy Crowley was saying, Mitt Romney's wrong, the president is right. I think that if you take a look at the totality of the state of the economy and what the policies are, and I have a, you know, a listing, 23 million unemployed, 47 million on food stamps, 5.5 million homes in crisis or foreclosure, four and a half thousand dollar drop in household income, 5.5 trillion dollars of new debt, 716 billion dollars in uh, Medicare cuts, 2.6 trillion dollars spent for Obamacare, 1.9 trillion in new taxes, 100 percent increase in gas prices. I think that the populace has been more attuned to what is exactly the state of affairs. Mm. So when the president comes out and says, oh no, I said from day one that this was a terrorist act, I think everyone knows, no, Mr. President, when your Secretary of State came out 
and said it was a terrorist act. When your press secretary came out and said it was a terrorist attack. When a person that works, and I'm not sure what his name is off the top of my head, that it was a terrorist attack. Um, the president would not say that it was a terrorist attack. What was he on The View? And they asked him pointedly, specifically, was this a terrorist attack? He wouldn't commit that it was a terrorist attack. And I think that the you know, CIA or, 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 or the State Department had an ongoing you know, conversation with the people <coughs> in, in Benghazi. They knew what was going on. We're talking like you know, two hours, three hours. They were on the phone the whole time this was going on. They had sufficient knowledge. They knew what was going on. I think that for him to say, hey, we're not sure if it was a terrorist act, you know, I think on the one hand, well, great. The election is right around the corner. Are you just trying to delay having to say that, yep, we got hit by terrorism again until after the election? That's what it smells like to me. Oh, Everybody else was saying it was a terrorist act. I always, I meet a lot of different people, and we talk and don't say Obama's a man of many words, but he's not a man of his word. Right. He says a lot of things, speaks very well, candor, and a lot of people believe that and listen to it, unless you go in a little bit, delve a little deeper, like on the unemployment schedules, whatever they're talking about. I read an article, and they'll say that why don't we use a different instead of the QE3 report, we win, the government should instead use the labor force participation rate because it actually shows those in the working class from 2008 to today dropped 2% from mm -hmm. 66 million down to 62 million are working today. So, you know, the, the figures and the stats can be construed to favor whoever builds the statistics Descriptive for Descriptive statistics. But when he makes a promise, if I can't do something in four years, I, I won't be a second term president. Didn't sound like he didn't want to leave last night. You know, the thing that I think is uh, maybe most striking or, or, or striking, the promise made in 2008 that by this time, unemployment would be at 5.4%. Oh. So he took office, it was at like 7.8%, same as it is right now. And he indicates that, you know, by the time re-election comes around, I'm going to have unemployment down to 5.4%. That's like 9 million people. So there are still 9 million people that are unemployed or underemployed and looking for work. And as you're pointing out, what is that real number? I mean, you know, they, they pegged that real number now, not at 8%, right. but right. up over right. 11%. That's right. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that a more accurate description of what exactly the state of the unemployment is, is going to be the number that takes into account not only unemployed, underemployed, people who are no longer looking for work, people who are just too frustrated and they're not looking for work. I would think that the true, what is it, the U6 number, the unemployment number, the U6 U3. number, U3, uh, yeah. you know, that's got to be, what, 12, 14, 15 percent. Okay. I mean, th that's right. a big, big number. Right, and as you say, if we use that U3 number, then it's then it's uh, this the 7.8 percent. I do think that it's uh, that it's interesting as well that uh, many people will say in these instant polls that they do that they feel that the president won last night. He certainly had to do better than he did in the uh, in the first debate. But the first debate where Mitt Romney so clearly won, I think the president lost last night. I think you can certainly build a very strong case that the president won that debate. Right. But no one is saying that Mitt Romney lost. I think right. to his base, I think to others, he is still seen as a, as a leader on the economy. If the economy is your issue, mm -hmm. uh, I saw some of the instant polling data today, even from people who said they felt the president won, that favored Mitt Romney. I didn't uh, see or detect any difference in performance by Mitt Romney. I thought he did. It was the same Mitt Romney in the first debate that showed up at the second debate. For the president, it was a drastically different performance between the first debate and the second debate. So I agree. I think you can make an argument that the president won the second debate. And in fact, someone in my office this morning asked me, well, did you see the debate? What did you think? And I thought, well, you know what? I think maybe on points I'm going to have to give it to the president. But truly, if you go beyond the performance that you know, they had on television, you look at the facts and what the economy holds and what the policies have done to us. Um, I got to say, I, I think that the facts are on the governor's side. I mean, just 
gut. We're going to head to a break right now. When we come back, I'm going to let Wayne open up with whatever okay. comment you were about to make before I interrupted you. Go to break. All right. Millbury Healthcare Center is a highly respected five-star deficiency-free skilled nursing and rehabilitation center. We are renowned for our compassionate care and specialty programming, making it possible for your next step, returning home. We listen and take the time to understand your goals. We provide support and the tools needed to safely prepare for your transition home. Millbury Healthcare Center is the community choice for skilled nursing and rehabilitation. Does your loved one suffer from memory impairment, dementia, or Alzheimer's disease? Consider Dodge Park Rest Home in Worcester. Our geriatric medical team and nursing staff are available 24 hours a day. We offer medication administration and incontinence care with dignity. Our activity programs are designed to engage and stimulate the mind. And with Dodge Park Rest Home, you can better protect your estate and save your assets with only a one-year look back. Your loved one will feel safe and at home with Dodge Park Rest Home of Worcester. Join us Wednesday, November 7th at Holy Cross College for a free symposium open to the public, the second annual focus on Alzheimer awareness. There will be a free buffet lunch, free parking, raffle prizes, and more. To register, call 508-755-6525 or register online at theseniorfocus.com. If you're still using phone company DSL for the internet, there's only one question to ask yourself. Why? With speeds that start at 30 megabits per second, Charter delivers the nation's fastest internet. And that's not us saying that, it's PC Magazine. Phone company DSL, by comparison, is slower and more expensive. And I don't know about you, but I don't want my internet slower and more expensive. Try Charter, it's smarter. Tired of weather reports that don't focus on Central Mass? Introducing Worcester Weather, the only video weather report for Worcester. Worcester Weather is easily accessible 24-7 by visiting chartertv3.com. It is updated throughout the day to give you the best video forecast possible. Worcester Weather also airs at 5 p.m. during the Jordan Levy Show in every Worcester News Tonight telecast. Worcester Weather gives you the local forecast you have always wanted. Worcester Weather on Charter TV 3 and chartertv3.com. Brought to you by Berterra Nissan of Auburn. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch and UMass Memorial Healthcare informed you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. I'm Andy Lacombe from Worcester News Tonight. Thank you for choosing Charter. Welcome back to the Senior Focus. I'm your host, Nick Haltzis. I'm here with Wayne Bailey and Hank Soltz. And Wayne, you were about to say something before we headed to the break. Yes, thank you, Nick. We were talking about, clearly it looked like the polls favored Romney, not Romney, I'm sorry, Obama last night to win. And based on his track record, he's going to have a tough job if he gets reelected. If right. not, there's going to be a little chaos out there. But even if he loses and, and we see Mitt Romney be reelected, He's going to have a tough haul ahead of him because if he doesn't fulfill something within a year's time, there's going to be a lot of frustrated citizens in our country. And we're going to start to see maybe some inflation. People are tired of seeing the low rates of return on their investments. From my point of perspective, when talking with a lot of my retirees that I work with, and it's just very frustrating. Most people don't realize the numbers. If, you, if I asked you or you, Hank, count to a billion as fast as you can, one, two, three, four, five, six. How long do you think it would take you to count to just one billion? A long time. Twice as long for you, Nick. But <laughs> thirty-three <laughs> years. Thirty-three years. Ooh, that's just really. Count to a trillion. A long time. Yeah. <laughs> so not in my lifetime. I couldn't yep. count to a billion. 
So, you know, when we're looking at these numbers, trillions of dollars, you know, where's it all go? I mean, is there poor management in our, in our government from all different, both sides? We need more bipartisan. We need our, both parties to work together. And I think maybe Mitt might be able to at least prove that as his first stop, to get both parties to work across the aisle and say, here's something we need to do. We're all citizens, and we have to work together to get this country in shape. you remember that auto commercial where there was a guy who could speak unbelievably yeah, fast? Yeah. I bet he could talk. And count to one billion in less than thirty-three years. Well, the guy that does the, the storage wars, the, who's like those guys that do the Betty, blah, 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 yeah. he says I couldn't do it in probably thirty years. <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. That is a long time. There is, there is though this this thought of the of the bipartisanship, mm -hmm. and it does seem to me more and more that what and this is why I wonder, you know, last night. Whose mind was changed? I mean, who is? I'm still not sure who is undecided because it seems as, to me as if we have two very different worldviews. So I don't yeah, know who's yeah, undecided. Yeah, yeah, no, I, but who would be more bipartisan? I mean, I think that's a it's not it's a question because it seems as if both bases just want each side to dig in their heels and not give an inch. Well, I mean, as far as bipartisanship and crossing over the aisle and you know dealing with the opposing party. I mean, I would just take a historical perspective. You take a look at Mitt Romney, a governor of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. what do you say, an 87% Democratic uh, uh, state house, and we got things done. He got things done. And then you take a look at the president's record, and I think an awful lot of what we see from the president is the creation of class warfare between one and another. I mean, as far as who's able to deal with the opposing party, I've got to say, I would much rather see Mitt Romney in there than the president. Well, I agree with what you said, Hank, when, when they're digging their heels in. Right. Uh, right after the debate, I watched Fox News, Business News, and then five minutes later, I'm on MSNBC, and I'm near, are they both watching the same <laughs> show? Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. But you know no. what? Boy. The legislators work for us. We yeah. don't work for them. and. We need someone, we need an executive who's able to form some kind of a consensus and get things done. And when you take a look at what you know, Mitt Romney did in passing things in the Massachusetts uh, uh, Congress, uh, Senate and House, there was bipartisan support. He had to because there simply weren't enough Republicans to pass anything. Mm -hmm. So he had to cross he's over the record. aisle with the president a lot of the things that he's passed had zero Republican participation. Yeah, you think back to the to a productive time in our in our nation's history, recent past, with President Bill Clinton as a as a Democrat, yep. as president, mm -hmm. Republican House, and yet they were somehow able to work together. I don't think that we see that as much anymore. I think the reason that we see uh, progress or we saw progress under the Clinton administration is because the man uh, you know compromised his position went toward the middle and was able to grab some of the more moderate Republicans and some of the more moderate we'll say uh, Democrats I don't see the same thing happening with President Obama I'm not sure I, there's such a thing as a moderate Republican and a moderate Democrat anymore well, I think that if Mitt Romney gets elected, we're going to find out if there is, because mm -hmm. if there isn't, I think he's going to have a problem as well. I will say also, you know, in last night's debate, as we kind of kick out that around here a little bit this afternoon, I think the president got lucky by being able to have the last word. Right. I think mm -hmm. that he scored some points on that 47 percent comment agree. I agree. of Mitt Romney. I agree. Um, I also agree with you when you say that, you know, I can't imagine who would be undecided at this point. Um, you pretty much are in favor of one camp or the other. And I think that one camp is going to look at the 47% comment that was made by Mitt Romney as an atrocious comment. And the an other side, the other camp, is going to say, hey, you know, sometimes you say things and it just and it doesn't come out the way you want it to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was said in the vice presidential debate. Mm -hmm. It was Biden and, and Ryan. And I thought to myself, yeah, well, you know what? Who better to say to than Biden? Because, you know, that guy sticks his foot in his mouth an awful lot. <laughs> it seems like every time he opens his mouth, he's saying something that's just not right. 
And I think clearly for part of that 47% comment, what Mitt Romney was, was saying to his, and it was, you know, high-priced donors, right. he was saying, listen, 47% are going to vote for the president no matter what. That's right. not who we're concerned about here. We're concerned about going out and getting the other 53%. Right. Just didn't How do we say convince right. them right. to vote for us? It has now become, as the president put it so well, and again, getting that last word in, uh, it has now become, hey, this guy doesn't care about half the country that he wants to be president of. But I think that people have made up their minds, and I don't think that the president's play and comments on the 47% will change anyone's mind. Either you know that, in fact, Mitt Romney is a compassionate person, and he does care about people, and not just the high-income people or the low-income people. He cares about all people. I think he does. I think he, he's a compassionate and conscientious person. And I think that it's wrong to try to paint him into a position where he doesn't care about anyone else except the 1% of the Americans that make mm. so much money. I don't buy it myself. And why would you want this job? I mean, why would you put yourself through what these guys put yourself through if you don't genuinely, at the end of the day, want to make a difference? Whether it's running for president or whether it's running for state representative, you get beat on so much these days by the press and everybody else. I, I, I've got to believe that there has to be, on, on, on all sides, yeah. people get into this, at least in the beginning, for the right reasons. They really do want to help people. Yeah, you take a look at the amount of abuse that they take, the vetting that they have to go through before they even run for the president's office. And it really is a, uh, a, a very trying time in their lives. Mm, mm, I mean, yeah, I can remember when Obama was first elected, what he looked like then and what he looks like now. I mean. It ages you. I, it, it, he's, he's been aged so much, it's rather incredible. It absolutely ages you. I also have to, to think that, going back to the, to the comment about who hasn't made up their minds yet, are, then are those folks, when they, when they make up their mind, which is probably going to be the day of the election on Tuesday, November 6th, is it just going to be style? Uh, so in other words, last night there will be some who were concerned that they thought that, that Mitt Romney was was too aggressive. I mean, the boy, there was a, a CEO in a, in a boardroom. I mean, there's a guy. Right. Who's, but, you know, was, was he too aggressive? Right. Well, I can't comment on how other people will perceive it, but the fact that, you know, he asked questions, rather pointed questions, kind of confronted the president, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I would rather see them direct questions at one another and talk and debate one another. And, you know, the president at one point makes comment about you know, the country having more oil production and natural na mm. natural gas production. And, you know, it, the facts are what they are. The production isn't from reserves on public land. They're from reserves on private land. It's private investment that's generating that kind of, uh, of a return. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the governor saying to the president, you know, well, if you're denying there's a, approximately a 50% drop in production and 50% drop in permits that, that have been uh, provided by the government, what number is it? How many, you know, how many uh, permits were denied? What's the percentage drop? There's a reason why that would be true, Nick, as far as the lack of lower production in the, in the private sector. I do a lot of investments with some clients that are doing oil and gas drillings and they're sitting on these wells. When the price changes these wells, they want to shut down, say it's too expensive for us now to maintain production at these levels to pull our drills up and go over here. So they shut it down for a while, caused maybe by some of the futures and some of the, you know, the, the futures that they talk about as far as uh, the commodities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I've gone to a couple of seminars where they said we had to close our wells down because right. the price was dictating it. It wasn't worth it. You know, we're going to have to head to a break right now, but when we come back, I do want to turn to the issue of an energy policy of the country. I know that there's been some talk about you know, natural gas and oil. Really, that's just a part of the energy policy. Mm -hmm. So I do want to talk about uh, what we see this president doing. Okay.
Does your loved one suffer from memory impairment, dementia, or Alzheimer's disease? Consider Dodge Park Rest Home in Worcester. Our geriatric medical team and nursing staff are available 24 hours a day. We offer medication administration and incontinence care with dignity. Our activity programs are designed to engage and stimulate the mind. And with Dodge Park Rest Home, you can better protect your estate and save your assets with only a one-year look back. Your loved one will feel safe and at home with Dodge Park Rest Home of Worcester. Millbury Healthcare Center is a highly respected five-star deficiency-free skilled nursing and rehabilitation center. We are renowned for our compassionate care and specialty programming, making it possible for your next step, returning home. We listen and take the time to understand your goals. We provide support and the tools needed to safely prepare for your transition home. Millbury Healthcare Center is the community choice for skilled nursing and rehabilitation. Join us Wednesday, November 7th at Holy Cross College for a free symposium open to the public, the second annual focus on Alzheimer awareness. There will be a free buffet lunch, free parking, raffle prizes, and more. To register, call 508-755-6525 or register online at theseniorfocus.com. family's favorite show shouldn't have to fight to be seen. With Charter, you get four DVRs. So now every family member can watch what they want, when they want, where they want, without any battles. Call now to get DVR service for your home. I can remember that night. Halloween night was one of the most exciting nights of the year. We went to every three deck or up three flights of stairs, filling that bag full of candy, man. Cannot have a Halloween party in schools anymore, right? I mean, kids don't dunk for apples anymore, do they? There was no Halloween outlet back in the uh, No Halloween outlet. There was no money for those kind of costumes. I hope, I really, really, really hope that the kids today could have those memories. Coverage from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. It was like nothing they've ever seen before. The race for U.S. Senate in Massachusetts is heating up this week. Firefighters responded to the two-alarm fire at around 4 a.m. Monday morning. The Vernon Street hydrant was ripped from the ground Sunday night in a car crash, sending gallons of water spraying into the air. Reporters in the field and an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. I'm Caitlin Tivnan from Worcester News Tonight. Thank you for choosing Charter. Welcome back to the Senior Focus. I'm Nick Kaltzis, your host. I'm here with Wayne Bailey and Hank Stoltz, and we're reviewing the presidential debate that occurred last night, and we're talking about the state of the economy in general. Um, you know, I think that when we went to a break, we were talking about uh, um, energy. Yeah, energy, the uh, uh, production of, uh, of natural gas and uh, oil. You know, one of the things that is uh, you know somewhat striking for me is the pipeline, uh, the oil pipeline from Canada. Was it the Keystone pipeline? Mm -hmm. Um, my understanding is that this current administration voted against the pipeline. I understand that it's perhaps next year going to be coming online or they're going to begin developing the pipeline. Have you heard that? Well, I'm not sure about that. I was interested in the president's answer last yeah. night. What, what he said something about we, we've laid enough pipe to go around the earth or, or something? Yeah, I found that a very interesting comment as well. I mean, the way I think of it, I don't really, you know, give a lot of credence to the comment that, you know, we've laid so much pipe that we can go around mm. the world when I think, well, okay, so some of the largest oil reserves in the world are in Canada. We all know that, right? And we know that China bought the rights to the oil. 
and I'm not sure of the exact percentage that we get, but we take an awful lot of our oil from the country of Canada. Does that mean that China is going to develop the oil and we have to buy our oil from Canada because the administration is cutting down on permitting and there's no more development in public lands and, and offshore drilling is down and onshore drilling is down? I find it very frightening. I think they're both on opposite sides as far as the theory on that. And I really think Obama wants the alternative energies, the solars, uh, the natural resources, not so much oil and gas. Romney clearly says, yes, we want oil and gas, and we are going to produce it, because it will provide the jobs. I can't understand why uh, the, the, the president who's elected now does not say, if we can get 7 million jobs and bring this pipeline down, fine. Instead of putting laws in, if it killed a few deer, moose, that come, birds, I think they talked about. So uh, it's frustrating. You know, when you take a look at the alternative energy sources, I agree. I think alternative en energy sources, very important. And the ability to develop successful alternative energy sources is tremendously mm -hmm. important for our future as we develop as a country into the future. But when you take a look at the renewable energy sources, um, only 9% of the energy consumption of the country last year was from these renewable sources. Um, wind generation accounted for 13% of that 9%, approximately 1% of the country's energy consumption. So if we go too far overboard in trying to rely solely on these alternative sources of energy, there isn't going to be enough energy for the country to develop. So, I mean, we're looking at unemployment, you know, Staggering, staggering levels. I think it's far more than 7.8 percent that you know they say. And then when you take a look at the numbers, well, there's a smoothing effect that the government applies, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a, a like a moving average number. I think that the actual numbers of unemployed are far greater than what they're telling us. And in the event we want to see growth in our economy, and what is our economy forecasted to grow at this year? Something like, you know, well, sub 2%? Sub yeah, it is, exactly. I think 2.2% 2 .2%, uh, worldwide and 1.7% here in the that's U.S. That's an mm. anemic number. I mean, you take a look at the Chinese number and what their economy is expanding at, and uh, the people on TV, you know, the media, uh, are saying, oh, you know, they're in drastic shape. They have a real downturn in their economy as well. They're growing at like 7.7%. 7.7% for us would be pretty nice. We're at you know, 2%. Yeah, no, absolutely. It just it does seem as if, as if everything should probably be on the uh, on the table. W there was another comment that was made by the president, and maybe s somebody here can can explain it to me because I certainly didn't understand it last night when they were talking about the energy. And, and I think part of this is is the president can tell us as he did last night that we have had growth in the economy and we've we've added X number of jobs. But our gut feeling is is that things right. haven't gone very well over the last four years. The uh, I don't the, even think it's a gut feeling. I mean, you take a look at the numbers, the numbers are what they mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll harken back to the fact, 23 million unemployed, an economy growing at about a 2% level. Um, you take a look at the number of dollars spent in taxes, the housing crisis, the drop of, uh, of, of household income, the drop in the value of people's primary residence, or just real estate in general. I mean, I don't think that the economy's done well. I don't think that we're doing well at all. I, I don't care what Nick. the president says. The numbers are what they are. I, I agree with you, and I agree that the media is really blowing this. They're providing cover is what they're doing. And just looking on backyard, I know a number of people are struggling trying to find employment. Mm -hmm. I know people are upside down on their properties trying to sell their homes. You know, with the young people today, they're really going to have, I'm real, really concerned about the next generation, my children, trying right. to find the work and, and their social security or their benefits down the road. It, it's really, ask anyone. You don't really have to listen to the media. Just look around in the neighborhood. See the, how many empty buildings are here in, the, in Worcester, in the community. 
In the, it, Mitt Romney made this this comment too, going back to energy, Nick, about how when the president took office, I think you know we were paying like a buck eighty nine or something for right. for gas. Mm -hmm. Th this is the comment that I didn't understand. I felt that the president then said that I was paying four dollars because the economy had recovered or was on the road to a recovery, and because it was a more robust economy I was paying four dollars. I'm going to need an economist to explain. What I, so do I want a, a, a worsening economy so I can go back to paying a dollar eighty nine? Because I don't understand why it's a good thing for me to be paying four dollars a gallon. Again, I think it's folly to make a comment like that, that, you know, the reason that gas prices are what they are is because, you know, the economy is going better, there's more demand for the product. You know, I think that's kind of a scary thing for people to hear and believe. The truth of the matter is there's been over a hundred percent increase in the cost of a gallon of gas since he took office until what it is today. It was a dollar eighty six four years ago. I kind of think that's unacceptable. If you're an employer and you hire someone and they simply don't get the job done, do you keep that person employed or do you say, look, I'm sorry, you're a great guy, you're a great woman, but you know what? I can't continue to put this product out to my clients. It's not fair to them. I don't think it's fair to the citizens of the United States to have to live like this and go through this. And just like Mitt Romney says, I don't think you have to live like this. I don't think you have to go through this. What? I, I think that you know you take a look at the president, you take a look at the governor, and you know at least it, it, from my perspective, I think it's kind of difficult to uh, uh, you know say that the governor's policies aren't going to help the economy. The man has a proven track record does, of success. Does he need to say, though, more? You guys are numbers guys. Does he need, Mitt Romney, need to give us more numbers? The president and Vice President Biden in his debate both seem to hit this five-point plan and both seem to say that the numbers don't add up. And in, in two minutes in a debate format, you don't really have time to go through, you know, get out your pie chart and run the numbers for me. But uh, you guys are numbers guys. I mean, is, uh, is it a five-point plan that would work for Mitt Romney? Well, I'm not sure if it's a five-point plan, a four-point plan. I don't know what the numbers are. I don't want to pretend to know what the numbers are. I know one thing. Take a look historically at the last four years, and you want to talk about numbers not adding up? $1.1 trillion debt every single year because the man spends more money than we bring in. Now, if you're a business owner, you don't spend more money than you have coming in, or you're not a business owner for very long. If you own your own home and you're spending more money than your wages and your salary, you're not going to own that home for long. That's what's happening to us. Now, when I think the governor said something to the effect, hey, I've got a couple of teenage children, and you know, I'm really, really used to people saying the same thing over and over and over again, even though they know it's not right, and hoping I somehow just change my mind. I think that's exactly what's going on. So they can say the numbers don't add up, and they can say that the governor wants to add $5.5 .5 trillion in new taxes. I just think that's not true. Well, I think Obama says it's only a one-point plan for Romney, but the, the real numbers, I do agree with you, Hank. I really think he needs to come out and say, well, if I'm going to lower taxes down on the middle class and he's going to take away some deductions or allow you to pick and choose up to maybe $25,000 either in charitable gifts or mortgage deductions and limit it there. Some people think that I'm going to be paying more in taxes actually. Some people because then that's that 47 percent right. of and, and the flip side of the coin is you take a look at the idea of providing more specificity in your budget, even though this president hasn't passed a budget oh, yeah. and adopted a budget in the entire time he's been president, which I think is atrocious. If you provide too much specificity with the state of you know partisanship that we see now, Democrats and Republicans and you know it's like oil and water. They simply don't mix. Do we want the governor to come out and lay out specific facts and that, say, hey, it's my way or the highway. This is the way it's going to be done. Or do we want him to lay out 
a general idea and then work with both houses of Congress and pass something that will have bipartisan support. In any event, we're going to have to head to a break right now. When we come back, I'm going to ask you that question again and get your opinions. Millbury Healthcare Center is a highly respected five-star deficiency-free skilled nursing and rehabilitation center. We are renowned for our compassionate care and specialty programming, making it possible for your next step, returning home. We listen and take the time to understand your goals. We provide support and the tools needed to safely prepare for your transition home. Millbury Healthcare Center is the community choice for skilled nursing and rehabilitation. Does your loved one suffer from memory impairment, dementia, or Alzheimer's disease? Consider Dodge Park Rest Home in Worcester. Our geriatric medical team and nursing staff are available 24 hours a day. We offer medication administration and incontinence care with dignity. Our activity programs are designed to engage and stimulate the mind. And with Dodge Park Rest Home, you can better protect your estate and save your assets with only a one-year look back. Your loved one will feel safe and at home with Dodge Park Rest Home of Worcester. Join us Wednesday, November 7th at Holy Cross College for a free symposium open to the public, the second annual focus on Alzheimer awareness. There will be a free buffet lunch, free parking, raffle prizes, and more. To register, call 508-755-6525 or register online at theseniorfocus.com. Charter TV3 and UMass Memorial Healthcare have teamed up to bring you the latest news and trends in healthcare. Health Watch, presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare, brings you the healthcare topics that are important to you. From stroke prevention to allergies, skin care to sports injury prevention, and nutrition to pregnancy, Health Watch and UMass Memorial Healthcare informs you on the issues that affect you on a daily basis. Health Watch on Charter TV3. For extended interviews with UMass Memorial Healthcare experts, log on to our website. Join me on the Hanks Toltz Experience. You know, people are always asking me, what is the experience? Well, that's the beauty of it. It's everything that has to do with Central Massachusetts, from the politics of the region to the great events that are going on each and every weekend or every night right here in Central Mass. It's everything that's going on. It's everything that you want to know about. And just like Kelly Square, where the traffic never stops, we never stop either. There's no red lights on the Hank Stoltz Experience, only on Charter TV 3. Tired of weather reports that don't focus on Central Mass? Introducing Worcester Weather, the only video weather report for Worcester. Worcester Weather is easily accessible 24-7 by visiting chartertv3.com is updated throughout the day to give you the best video forecast possible. Worcester Weather also airs at 5 p.m. during the Jordan Levy Show and every Worcester News Tonight telecast. Worcester Weather gives you the local forecast you have always wanted. Worcester Weather on Charter TV 3 and chartertv3.com. Brought to you by Berterra Nissan of Auburn. I'm Siobhan Connolly from Worcester News Tonight. Thank you for choosing Charter. Welcome back to the Senior Focus. I'm Nick Kaltz, is your host, and I'm here with Hank Stoltz and Wayne Bailey. And when we left, we were talking about the, we'll say, lack of specificity laid out by uh, uh, Governor Romney with respect to his uh, economic plan. I'm not sure how much lack of specificity there is to begin with. Uh, as uh, we had uh, been discussing, and I think Wayne pointed out uh, during the break, that you know, in a debate where you have two minutes and you don't have any more time, really, how much specificity can you lay out there? And as I said, you know, you want someone who's going to be able to bring the Republicans and the Democrats together and pass some kind of a budget. And if you lay out with too much specificity, hey, this is what my plan is, this is what we're going to do, I'm afraid there's going to be an awful lot of kickback. What is your opinion? Well, I, I think Mitt Romney, on his own record, 
I'm convinced that he can do the job. He doesn't need to lay out a plan broadly, to, just broadly to everyone. Right. I think he's got the track record that he can do that. With all the negative campaigning Obama administration has been painting against him, the public, it's, it's like a brainwash is being into them. But I really totally believe Mitt Romney is, is confident enough to go in there and run this government as a business and make the cuts that he needs to to get us in better shape and, and get jobs going. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. How much do you, do you lay out? First of all, I, I will say that if you go to the candidates' websites, I think they lay out a lot mm, more right, than what we hear in the, in the debates. It's just how many people are going to go to Paul Ryan's website and read his five-point well, point I mean, plan. Well, I mean, there you go. Who, in my estimation, and, you know, granted, not everyone's going to adopt my position, nor do I expect them to, right? But who better than Ryan, Paul Ryan, mm -hmm. to turn loose on the economic woes that face the economy and the citizens of this country? I like, I, I like Paul Ryan. Yeah. Uh, this I think he's got some good ideas. Th this is actually so close with just three weeks to go mm -hmm. that I do think that if I was the Romney-Ryan campaign, I would seriously think about in that last week going to the American people and pulling you know, a Ross Perot. I'm going to buy 30 minutes of time. I'm going to get out my pie charts. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to get under the hood, and I'm going to fix this thing. And here are the numbers. They keep saying we don't have numbers. Here's the numbers. I don't know how many millions of Americans would watch. Some would. But I think that people would take a look at that, and when you're the one explaining it to them, they'd say, okay, that makes sense. It's not some right. sort of Good voodoo point. economics. Yeah, I, I think the problem is media coverage. Not everyone needs to watch the program, but if there's sufficient and adequate media coverage, it's going to blanket the entire country. Everyone's going to know what the plan is. However, if it doesn't get adequate media coverage, people are not going to know. You're going to have to watch that program so that you can hear what the numbers are. But what channel will put it on? Which channel would put it on? They don't have to put it on. Even if you want to buy an ad on there, they can say no. And we know what that's stations true. are biased with what parties are on. That's there. right. That's right. So he might get on the Fox News, and how many people are going to watch it? All, all and you know, the other interesting thing that I thought about is when you indicated that, you know, buy airtime, put your plan out there. There's only three weeks to go. Let people know what it is that, that you're thinking. Take a look at the campaign contributions and the amount of money that is being spent by the candidates. It's so over seven hundred million dollars. Wow. I, I think wow. that I think President Obama is outspending Romney like two to one. Yeah, yeah. It's you're right. It's, he, he, he has he's more. Tremendous. I had all the statistics of what the state. Right. California was a big supporter, and how much the big business gave. They were pretty close on both on big businesses. They you were know, offering. with the support of the unions, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite certain that the unions are restricted in the amount of campaign donations that they can collect. You know, from the uh, uh, union members, and then provide it. Uh, you know, to the candidate they support. And I don't think that Governor Romney has the same ability to raise that kind of money. Early in the uh, campaign, I think Mitt Romney was holding his own and perhaps even, you know, bringing in a little bit more money than the president. But in the last month or two, I think the president is uh, kind of smoking him as far as the amount of campaign yeah. contributions. And we're probably not is. seeing as much of it here in Massachusetts where we're not a battleground state. Could you imagine living in a Florida or an Ohio or a, a Nevada? Uh, you know, mm -hmm. some of these states that are still in play where it must just be nonstop 24 I hours a day. I have a client, and I believe he's from Florida. He, he's from one of the uh, uh, battleground states. and. That's exactly what he said. He said, you have absolutely no idea here in Massachusetts. You don't see political commercials. That's all we have. We have political commercial after political commercial, on and on and on. One after another, that's all there is on TV. I wouldn't want to watch it. I'm sure they aren't either. But it would be a turnoff, I would think, yeah. if it's, you're inundated like that. It makes you, it makes you sick. And to go yeah. through months of, uh, of that, it, I would think it would be absolutely a turnoff. It would suppress the vote because, wow, I just am so fed up with yeah. the, you know, with the you lies. And, when when yeah. you see Elizabeth Warren's commercials and Scott Brown's commercials, that enough 
the, the, j just those commercials right. have done mm. for me. I don't want to see any more. <laughs> I can't imagine if we saw an onslaught of continuous presidential commercials. No, no, abso a absolutely. And we do only have this this three weeks. So I mean, so here it really comes in the in these last three weeks about. Uh, I mean, I don't know that there's another game changer. The fact that Romney no. actually had in that first debate a game changer yes. right. is, is amazing. I don't know that there really is another one in the next three weeks. Well, if there is one, it will be the debate on Monday. And I think that the debate that occurred yesterday didn't really favor you know, one side or the other. They were, I think, both somewhat uncomfortable. I agree. I think that you know, President Obama did much better than he did in the first debate, but I think in the third debate it's going to revert back toward a more traditional one-on-one -on -one debate, being able to ask each other questions. And I got to think, I would love to see the governor ask pointed questions of the president and vice versa and hear what they have to say. Well, here's what they talk about for the seniors right now. that We've given you a raise of 1.7 percent of Social Security but they won't tell you how much your Medicare Part B is going to go up until after the election. Right. So the net check to seniors are going to be less. If they were all knew that before the election, those that were thinking about who to vote for, I think a lot of the seniors would say, that's not helping us because we're seeing a reduction in our Social Security checks in the last five years. We only have about a minute and a half left, but uh, I did want to ask you about the stock market. It has been doing better in the past like month or so, right? Yes, it has. Do you think that is because <clears throat> the governor has been doing better in the polls, has had a bounce in the polls? Historically, me, I don't think it has any makes any difference at all. Okay. Historically, any incumbent that someone's going in, the market will go up over 10 to 12 percent. If now the, a new party comes in, usually it's the reverse. It's about 4 percent. And it, then it'll start to build up. And historically, four years of any Republicans have always averaged over, you know, the, the after a down year, they go up four years on that. I'm going to sneak in one question before the end of our program. And that question is question number three, medical marijuana. At first, I thought that, no, I'm not in favor of that. I wouldn't vote for there to be medical marijuana. And I had a conversation with my wife, who's a nurse manager at UMass, and, you know, has seen an awful lot of people suffering from various ailments that really would benefit by the uh, uh, use of marijuana. And I think it's changed my opinion. I think that, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that if people need uh, that particular relief, should be uh, available to them. What do you think? Well, now that they've decriminalized it, I think, in Massachusetts, to some I don't know, an ounce that you can have or something like that, probably a lot of those people that are in pain are getting it anyways, but mm -hmm. they're just paying mm -hmm. too much for it. And it's not probably the right type. But I am not in favor of it. I think, just like if you were drinking, who's going to control that? You can't, if someone's driving under the influence of marijuana, you can't take a test on that. There's no breathalyzer, Hank, only through blood. I was going to ask you what your opinion is too, but I'm afraid we've run out of time. So I'm going to have to have <laughs> oh you come back on right. the show. He's in between. Yes, so, that, so, that, he's, so that we can see what your opinion voter. is. Thank you for watching the Senior Focus, and hope that you join us next week. Thank you.